Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's your girlfriend back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe and yeah, just enjoy the content that we're putting out. If there's something that you want us to react to, drop the link in the comment section below and we'll do it. A big shout out to the person that suggested this. Today I'm going to be reacting to the day you were born versus the day you die. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. So tonight I wanted to reflect on um, a statement, a very powerful statement that doesn't really have a solid attribution. So, you know, sometimes it'll be attributed to Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala, sometimes to Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu. But uh, though it doesn't have a solid attribution, it has such a beautiful and powerful meaning. And that's why probably it's been attributed to so many people. Uh, because of the power of that meeting and uh, when you know uh, you go and you listen to the khutbah that uh, Sheikh Abdullah Wahid uh, gave for his brother Sheikh Abdul Rahim Wahid Rahimahullah Ta'ala uh, which I posted earlier today um, you'll see that this was one of the statements that Abdul Rahim uh, had written in his notebook and it is the statement وَلَدَتْكَ أُمُّكَ يَبْنَ آدَمَ بَاكِيَا وَالْقَوْمُ حَوْلَكَ يَضْحَكُونَ سُرُورًا that your mother gave birth to you, O son of Adam, and you were crying. And while you were crying, everyone around you was laughing. So work for a day in which the people around you are crying and you are the only one that is laughing in joy. So you came into this world and as you came into this world, the people around you were laughing and you were crying. And when you leave this world, let it be that the people around you are crying and you are laughing. SubhanAllah, there's so much to talk about here and so much to reflect upon. And I wanted to reflect on just a few elements of the statement. And this is something that's really important for us to always keep the day of our janazah in front of us, to always keep the day that we leave in front of us and to compare the day that we're born to the day that we die. Now, everything that happens to us from the moment that we come in to the moment that we leave, uh, there's a cycle, right? And subhanAllah, if you live long enough, then you will see that you will physically be reduced to exactly what you came into this world as, right? You come into this world completely dependent upon everyone around you. And if you live long enough, you leave this world completely dependent upon everyone around you. And that's one of the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us to reflect upon how we come into this world and how we leave it. But when you come into this world, you're coming from the darkness of the womb and the trauma of going from realm to realm, of coming into this unknown world is great. And you don't know what's happening around you. You have no real perception of what's happening around you. And the people are in such joy because they know the reality of this world and they know the world that you've come into, but you don't know the world that you've come into. And they are so pleased with the blessing of your arrival, that they laugh and, and they celebrate with joy. And while they celebrate with joy, you know, you come into this world and if you ever see the way that the baby is, is put into the next phase and the next phase, you know, the way that the baby's just kind of treated like a product sometimes, um, you know, the first thing they do is they wash you and then they, uh, you know, make sure that they clean you up and they wrap you up and then they try to make sure that they keep your temperature right and things of that sort. And subhanAllah, you think about when you leave, you leave this world and once again you have people washing you and wrapping you up and keeping you at a certain temperature and sending you off to the next world. SubhanAllah, it's it's just the, the reality of, of just if you see the day that the baby is born and literally the way that the washing takes place when a person dies. So there's a parallel that is there. And when you come into this world, the people receive you and there is laughter and joy. For the believer, when the believer leaves this world, it's the angels that are receiving you into the cloth of Al-Jannah, into the kafan of Al-Jannah. And they comfort you and they give you ease and they tell you, you know, uh, do not worry, do not, do not grieve. 
about that which you have left behind, right? Don't worry about that which is to come. Don't grieve about that which you've left behind. We're with you. نحن أولياءكم في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة. We've been with you through throughout this entire time. We were your awliya. We were your protective friends in this life, and we will be with you throughout the hereafter. And you have the Jannah that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has promised you. You have the paradise that God has promised you. You have the reward that awaits you. It's you're you're exiting from this world and you're going into the hands of the angels into the kafan into the cloth of the angels and then rising ta'ala god willing to those places that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised you so there is a parallel there that exists as well but this particular uh strong meaning that when you came into this world the people laughed and you cried when you leave this world, make sure that it is such that the people cry and that you are laughing. Now, your laughter, your joy is if you are received by the angels of mercy and entering into the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? If you have prepared sufficiently for the next life, prepared sufficiently for the next phase of your existence. And so you've done everything that you needed to do to make sure that the good deeds that you had planted in this life are now waiting for you as you enter into the next realm. So that's the joy that you're feeling there. And that's the raha, that's the the relief that you feel from this world. And every person leaves this world, as the Prophet said, either relieved or relieving. Uh, Relieved uh, from this world or the world is relieved from that person. So if the world is relieved from that person, that's someone that harmed others, and the world is relieved from that person. But a person who is relieved from this world is someone who brought goodness to this world and they leave this world in a way that the people miss them, that the people cry for them, that the people feel a void when they leave this world. And so they cry. So subhanAllah, it actually involves both the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the the reward, the preparation for the next life in the sense of the good deeds that you have prepared for the next life, as well as not harming anyone, not leaving behind uh, uh, you know, a bad taste in anyone's mouth, not leaving behind a hardship that you cause to someone else, not leaving behind pain that you cause to other people, not leaving behind a burden that you placed upon other people such that they're actually relieved that you're gone. This is a really powerful expression, right? So when you leave this world, you leave it in a way that the people would miss you, that the people around you would miss you, that they would feel a loss of your comfort and the mercy that you used to show towards them, the goodness that you used to show towards them, and you experience the goodness that you prepared for the next life that is now meeting the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what he has facilitated for you of the next phase of your existence, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala, into Jannah al-Firdaus, into the highest level of paradise. So again, you know, thinking about the day that you die, are the people going to be crying while you laugh? Are the people going to be crying while you cry, right? Because if if the people cry because they miss you, but you've done nothing to prepare for the next life, you've put nothing forward, then you'll also be crying, right? You'll also have the pain of what comes next. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all from that. But it's two things here, right? That you laugh and you feel joy at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for you in the next phase of your existence. You are encountering the goodness that you put forth of which you had hoped to reap the fruits of uh, in the next life. And so now you're seeing the fruits of your labor in this life as you go into the next life. And a person who enjoys the virtues or the fruits of the, you know, of of the next life, of the paradise and the mercy and the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's been prepared for them in the next, would not want to come back to this world, right? Why would they want to come back to this world if they're encountering the blessing of the next life? And so you are relieved from this world and at the same time you have not left behind pain to where people are relieved from you but rather people uh, will will miss the cure and the healing and the goodness that you used to bring to them when you were alive. So again, وَلَدَتْكَ أُمُّكَ يَبْنَ آدَمَ بَاكِيَا وَالْقَوْمُ حَوْلَكَ يَضْحَكُونَ سُرُورًا فَاعْمَلْ لِيَوْمٍ أَن تَكُونَ إِذَا بَكَوْ فِي يَوْمِ مَوْتِكَ ضَاحِكًا مَسْرُورًا You came into this world crying, you came into this world crying while everyone around you was laughing. Make sure you leave this world while everyone is crying and you are the one who is laughing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to have the best of this life and the best of the next 
and protect us from the punishment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to enjoy the best of this life, the best of the blessings that he has put before us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to do good to everything and to everyone that is around us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to have the everlasting jannah, the everlasting bliss that he has prepared for those whom he loves. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst them. Allahumma ameen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on Shaykh Abdul Rahim, uh, rahimahullah ta'ala, who subhanAllah truly, uh, that was uh, the way that he uh, he left this world. He left behind many people in tears. Um, and we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make him amongst those who is laughing and enjoying what Allah has prepared for the believers in the next phase. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullah khayran wa salam. Very interesting video. Um, are you guys prepared for the next life? <coughs> and how exactly can you prepare for the next life? Should we live in fear that any second now, any of us can drop dead? Or are we saying I have to do good deeds so that I, cre I create a place for me in heaven? Like, have a place for me saved in heaven? Another thing is... um. In life, there's a beginning and there's an end. You can't, um, you just can't believe that you forever be on earth for, I don't know, till like you're old but you're still not dying. That is impossible. Um, when someone comes into the world, there's big celebrations. When people die, many people cry. But I've always said that just because someone died doesn't mean we should mourn them. We can mourn them, we shouldn't just cry. I feel like we should celebrate people when they die. Like he said, maybe they impacted the world in one way or another. We should be happy and have um, give ourselves that time to appreciate the good things. Because if that person was alive, I think would have been enjoying la uh, life, having laughs and just going about life. That's why I think death should also be celebrated because you know this person is going to a good place. Otherwise, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next reaction video.